your back has a period that it's just simply weak. You feel a lot better after the spasms go away, but the back is just not strong. He's battling a bit of that now. Tim does not have a stolen base this year. Mike McFarland looked at ball one high. Mike singled to left in the second. With the bloop hit by Nearing, Boston now with five hits. And the Orioles still do not have one. Foul to the screen. One and one on McFarland. Those of you who are wondering, California University of Pennsylvania is a Division II school. And Krivda was a first team All American at the Division II level in 1991. 23rd selection of the Orioles in the free agent draft in 1991. Grew up a Pittsburgh Pirates fan in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Here's one one pitch missed. And it's two and one if McFarland can keep the inning going Lee Tinsley would bat next. Hmm. Good velocity on that pitch of the not ordinarily a hard thrower but he managed to sneak this one by McFarland. His fastball perhaps uh, appears a little quicker to hit her after seeing some of those off speed curve balls. Line to center, and again, the breeze helps to kill it. And it settles into the glove of Goodwin for the final out of the inning. Red Sox strand a runner. That's the first man they've left on base. And after four, it's Boston three and Baltimore nothing. Red Sox lead 3-0 as the Orioles bat in the fifth. Wakefield has faced the minimum 12 batters for the first four innings. The Orioles have had only one base runner. That was on a walk to Brady Anderson last inning. Bobby Bonilla pulled one foul. Bonilla struck out swinging. Seemed almost amused by his problems with the knuckleball. As he let off the second. Lania Ripken and Baines coming up. Three runs, five hits for Boston. No runs, no hits for Baltimore. Neither team has made an error. Characteristic fastball there from Wakefield to a power hitter, leading three nothing. Of course, maybe that had something to do with it. And he threw another one. Bonilla popped it up. Wakefield said he couldn't see it, but Mo Vaughn did. That is in fair territory, says Drew Coble, the home plate umpire. One out. Oh, Benet up there, right-handed against the right-handed batter. A couple of fastballs to him. This one popped up. Very tough sky today here. Very high sky. Mo Vaughn with the catch. Very near home plate. Cal Ripken tried to bunt and fouled it off. Cal lined the left. In the second. The hardest hit ball off Wakefield at this point. Sent Greenwell right back in front of the fence. Mm. Not as good a swing that time by Ripken on the mesmerizing knuckle ball from Wakefield. This is slower than a batting practice fastball. And Ripken trying to get a piece of the dancing pitch from Wakefield. Nothing doing. 
The 0 2. He'll drop down a bit and miss. <laughs> he must just be bored because you wonder yeah. the way he's dominating the <laughs> lineup, this one, and all the others that he's faced over the last couple of months. Did he even bother to try something different? <laughs> Uh, McFarlane may be saying the same thing. Hey, wait a minute. It's tough enough catching it the other way. And Ripken strikes out. Two down in the fifth. And that is the third strikeout for Tim Wakefield. He continues to change speeds on the knuckleball after he got Ripken down in the count. That's the hard one. Notice how much shorter and quicker the break is. Still very difficult to hit. Harold Baines slide to left in the second he looked at ball one Red Sox lead three nothing top of the fifth the hits five to nothing in favor of Boston ball just outside McFarland couldn't squeeze it it's easier for us to sit on the side and talk about but you would wonder what would happen if some lineup against Wakefield would just say hey we're not going to swing until we get two strikes on us. It was not the case with Baines. He bounced the 2 0 to short. Valentin threw him out. And Wakefield still has faced only the minimum 15 men through five innings. 3 0 Boston. Penobscot High Stakes Bingo. The Arikin Mercury Dealers Association. All the scoring in this game came in the Boston first. Jose Canseco hit a three-run homer with John Ballantin and Mo Vaughn aboard. Tim Wakefield has allowed only one base runner on a walk through five innings. And he's made quick work of the Orioles. He's needed only 16 minutes of actual time spent on the mound to pitch those five scoreless and hitless innings. Rick Krivda, his opposite number, has been on the mound twice as long. Game summary brought to you by your Lincoln Mercury Dealers Association. Is anything like time of possession? That's yeah. our crew. Cognizant of the fact that Wakefield works quickly, keeping track of just how quickly he works. And our crew likes it. Lee Tinsley bounced into a 6-4-3 double play in the second. Luis Alisea, Willie McGee to follow. Tinsley's quickly in the hole 0-2 as he dribbles that one foul off third. Breaking ball got him. Trivda has actually pitched quite well with the exception of the home run. Of course, that's a large exception, but since then he has had a very easy time of it with the Red Sox lineup. John, as I mentioned, when he started this ball game today, he really has not pitched that badly since joining the Orioles. His earn run average coming in this ball game today at 3.91. He gets the ball around the plate. 1992, he split his year between Kane County and Frederick. That year he struck out 188 batters and 170. Two innings, 173 innings. He led all of minor league baseball in strikeouts that year, even though he does not throw hard. He has been a strikeout pitcher in the past. Matter of fact, in 92, when he had all those strikeouts, he had one more than Brian Taylor, Ballyhooed Yankees first round pick in 1991. He was second in all of minor league baseball in strikeouts. Yankees and Cleveland are wrapping up their series today at Yankee Stadium. New York leads two to nothing in the bottom of the second. Paul O'Neill hit a two run homer in the first. Alisea strikes out for the second time. Back to back strikeouts here in the fifth for Krivda. And he has now struck out five. Well, he's shown me some signs today of a young man who really knows how to pitch. He uses the fastball to crowd some hitters, give him a little bit of room, and then he starts to work on him with. A variety of off-speed pitches, the curveball and the straight change. The curveball has been his good pitch today, though. William McGee bounced back to the mound in the first. He singled to left, stole second on a play in which the Orioles had him picked off, but the throw to second was dropped. And then the Orioles finally got him on a swing and a miss by Vaughn. The pitch went to the backstop. 
game was about halfway between second and 30. Thought it was a foul ball. Didn't run. The Orioles threw down to second and applied the tag. In that game at New York, the starting pitchers are Mark Clark for Cleveland and David Cohn for New York. And O'Neill's two-run homer in the first is his 16th home run of the year. Two-nothing Yankees in the second. McGee, a late swing and a foul ball off to the right. Pitching matchups are set for the three-game series. With the Yankees beginning tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on Nesson, Eric Hansen against Scott Kamenicki. Tuesday night, we're back with you here on UPN 38. Real Cormier against Sterling Hitchcock. And on Wednesday afternoon on Nesson at 1 o'clock, Vaughn Eshelman against Andy Pettit. And then the Red Sox head out on a West Coast trip. Kevin Kennedy and his coaching staff had their pitching rotation adjusted just a bit so they could get a pair of left-handers working in that series against New York. And they hope that on this road trip they'll have Aaron Seeley join them. He had another rehab start last night, pitched five and two-thirds innings without incident. And his return should be just around the corner. Two two pitch. Great diving stopped by Manto and he threw wide of the bag. Well, he followed up a terrific play with a bad play. Once he got up, he had plenty of time to get McGee. The ball was hit so sharply, but his throw was wide. This is an interesting scoring dilemma for the official score. Should be a base hit here. I've got to give the benefit of the doubt to the runner here. The effort that Manto puts into getting to this ball, now he has to rush just a little bit, and you might expect an errant throw after having to rush, although had the throw been on the mark, and maybe could have taken a bit more time, maybe more time than he thought he had, McGee would clearly have been an out. Yes, he would have been. And granted, he made a great play, but once he got up to his feet, the stop that he made has nothing to do with it. The throw should have been on the money, and he should have been out, but it is a hit. It is a hit. I guess that falls under what we were talking about earlier. You can't assume he would have been out, even though he was five steps from the bag. <laughs> the throw was approaching first. Now, Valentin got a scorekeeping hit last night on the ball he hit to Ripken at shortstop. Yeah, I don't think any of these Red Sox hitters are ever going to be upset with the scoring here at home. Shouldn't be. Orioles pitch out. McGee's at first with two outs in the fifth. Red Sox lead 3 0. They're now hitting the Orioles six to nothing. John Valentin walked and scored on the Canseco three run homer in the first. He struck out swinging in the third. Mentioned earlier about all the balks committed by Kribda. He balks with by taking his right leg and allowing it to go behind the rubber today. It doesn't seem like he's even come close to that. So I'm sure Mike Flanagan, the left-hander in his own right, has been working with Krivda with that move. <laughs> Up and away. Two balls, one strike. Strike two. Two and two with two outs. And McGee at first in the fifth. Three nothing Red Sox. One thing that allowed Jimmy Key to have such a great move. His knee would go behind the rubber, but his foot would not go behind the rubber. From this angle here, you can see Krivder's action if he throws to first. At that time, you could see where the foot went behind the rubber. Once that pickup leg goes behind the rubber, he must throw to the plate then. McGee runs on the 3-2 pitch. Valentin lifts it into shallow left. 
Ripken out. Anderson in. It's Anderson. To end the inning. After five, the Boston Red Sox have a 3 0 lead. It. Mo Vaughn can sock it anywhere he wants. But he chooses Shawmut because when he banks there, he can get five sock it away game cards and five chances to win 50,000 bucks. There are over 20 ways to get game cards, so for details, visit any Shawmut branch. Fortunately for Mo, they're all over New England. Said I was a hipster doofus. <gasps> Can't you see I'm burned out? Wow. My boys need a house. Yo, yo, ma. I'm Kramer. Five times a week. Oh, baby. Friends, it's time to vote for the UPN 38 Ford 10th Player Award presented to the Red Sox player who has contributed beyond anyone's expectations this season. This year, no shortage of candidates. Your entry could lead you to a new 1995 Ford Explorer. Send your player choice, your name and address to the 1995 10th Player Award, Box 38, Boston 02135. Entries must be received by September 19th, so send your vote today. Tim Wakefield is not allowed to hit through the first five innings. And he's pitching with a 3 0 lead as he works to Jeff Manto. Manto fly to center in the third. Bottom third of the order. Manto's on and Alexander. There's a strike, two and one. Orioles have had only one base runner. Brady Anderson walked with one out in the fourth, but on the next pitch, Palmero hit into a double play. Fastball inside, three and one. And he missed low. He walked the leadoff man on five pitches. I mentioned before, I'm, I, I know why batters don't do that. You have such a fear of getting behind in the count quickly to a knuckleballer. And once you do that, you have almost no chance of making up the ground. But I also am surprised that more lineups have not forced Wakefield to throw more pitches. Rarely do you ever see him hit with a strike on them. Greg Zahn looked at a strike. He fly to center in the third. Red Sox lead 3-0. They've out hit the Orioles 6-0. Ball up and away. Mo Vaughn's playing a little bit behind Jeff Manto at first. One one pitch miss. Wakefield has done this before. You'll recall on June 9th, the ball game here at Fenway, Tim retired the first 17 Oakland A's before walking Mike Bordick on a 3 2 pitch. He's on the left, right at Greenwell for the first out of the sixth inning, and Mento returns to first. And with one out in the eighth, Scott Brocious walked. Number six. And Stan Javier. Single to center for the first Oakland hit. One out in the eighth on Wakefield's 99th pitch. And one month later, July 9th in Minnesota, Tim pitched his first major league shutout since his final appearance with Pittsburgh in 1993. In that game, he retired 16 to the first 17 twins. 
Well, only a walk to Jeff Rebele leading off the third. Interrupted that string. And for the second time in 95, Wakefield held the opponent hitless into the eighth inning. Rebele opened the eighth in that game with a single. And Wakefield still wound up with the complete game four hit shutout of the Minnesota Twins. His only shutout of the year. Manny Alexander pops it up along the left field line. And Greenwell reaches into the stands to make the catch. For much of the time that Mike was running after the pop fly, it looked like he didn't really see the ball, but he certainly saw it at the end. He went into the stands and snatched it away from the spectators for the second out of the inning. There's a guy who's played left field for a long time here. He knows a lot of the nooks and crannies out there and where you have to get. And he's fortunate here that he can get up high enough to reach over in the stands and then hit the padding with his hip as opposed to his rib cage. Outstanding play by Mike Greenwell. Two outs in the sixth. The runner at first. Three nothing Red Sox. Top the order in Curtis Goodwin. Two and zero oh the count. Does appear that the Orioles are determined to be much more patient with Wakefield here in the sixth inning. Goodwin is bounced to second. Actually tried to bunt his way on, and Alisea fielded it. That's down to Vaughn. Mo flips to Wakefield for the out. The Orioles still do not have a hit after six innings. Through five and a half. The Red Sox three and the Orioles nothing. Five dollars for you, two dollars for you, fifteen dollars for you, congratulations, fifteen dollars for you, very nice sir, here's two dollars for you, five dollars for you, oh my goodness, a hundred dollars, congratulations, I'm so happy for you, two dollars for you, two dollars for you, have a nice day, five dollars for you, fifteen dollars, five dollars for you, two dollars for you, five dollars for you, my goodness, I love this, here's two. If you're pregnant, please get an HIV test. By Dunkin' Donuts, where it's always worth the trip. As we told you, New York leads Cleveland 2 to nothing. They're now in the bottom of the third. Paul O'Neill, a two-run homer in the first, is 16th off Mark Clark. It's David Cohn on the hill for the Yankees. California and Minnesota scoreless after one inning. Jim Abbott on the mound against Brad Radke. Detroit did not score in the first at Milwaukee. The Brewers are now batting. Sean Bergman, who shut out the Red Sox on their last road trip against Ricky Bonus. Seattle at Kansas City. They're scoreless in the bottom of the first. Bill Kruger against Tom Gordon. Chicago leads Oakland 1-0 top of the second. Ariel Prieto against Wilson Alvarez. And Toronto is at Texas tonight. Carrera against Gross. In the National League, Colorado and Atlanta tied to two in the bottom of the fifth inning. Chipper Jones and Javier Lopez have hit solo homers for Atlanta off Brett Saberhig, and he's opposed by John Smoltz. Montreal leads Philadelphia, one to nothing, bottom of the third. Heredia against Green. The rest of the action is later. Chicago is at San Francisco, Foster and Valdez. Pittsburgh's at Los Angeles. Nagel against Martinez. Cincinnati is at Florida. Wells against Gardner. And in the ESPN game tonight, New York is at Houston. Cornelius against Reynolds. Mo Vaughn, the leadoff batter here in the sixth. Red Sox have not scored since the first when Jose Canseco hit a three-run homer into the screen with Vaughn and Valentin aboard. They've had base runners in every inning since. Krivda 
has pitched well. And of course, the focus at the moment is on Tim Wakefield, who has held the Orioles without a run or hit through the first six innings. And Vaughn strikes out. Second time Mo has whiffed today. And the strikeouts starting to pile up now for Trivda. He has six. Last two at bats for Vaughn. He was down in the count after the first two pitches, 0 and 2. And once that happened, Trivda just went to work on Mo. Teased him upstairs and then came right back with a fastball that looked like he got it by Mo. Mo may have been anticipating a breaking ball pitch there. Jose Canseco with one strike. Jose hit a three run homer into the screen and left. In the first, he popped out to the second baseman, Manny Alexander, leading off the fourth. And he's quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. Certainly, things are not going well these days for the Orioles, having lost 10 of their last 13 and having fallen 13 games behind the Red Sox. And it doesn't look like it's going to get much easier for them. They head home after today's game for a series with Cleveland. Then Kansas City comes in for one game, one of those makeup games in the strike short near. And then Phil Regan's team heads right back on the road for a West Coast trip. To Oakland, Seattle, and California. Four against California. And they need to turn this around in a hurry if they want to be a wild card contender, particularly with that upcoming schedule. Strike three. Jose jumped out of the way, but that appeared to have plenty of the plate. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Trivda. Here in the sixth inning, he has seven strikeouts in the ballgame. The young man has pitched himself a heck of a ball game other than that first inning when Canseco hit the three-run homer. He's used all parts of the strike zone. He's pitched inside as he should be trying to do, especially in this ballpark, paying off for him. And seven strikeouts matches his major league high. It's only his fifth major league start. He also struck out seven in his major league debut at Chicago. Mike Greenwell has twice fly to center against the 25 year old rookie lefty. Doesn't have that many pitches so they had to go around at least once. Well, Von Eshelman, when he was off to that great start early this year, and people were saying, how could the Orioles leave him unprotected? Vaughn said, they have a lot of very good left-handed pitchers in their organization, and they had to make some choices. I understand what they did, and obviously, Krivda is one of those pitchers Eshelman had in mind when he said that. Well, it's not always the guy that's the big flamethrower that can be successful today. Krivda is certainly proving that. Moves the ball around. He's got good action, good movement. Greenwell tapped one back to the mound, and Krivda works an easy one, two, three inning. The spotlight will return to Tim Wakefield as he takes the mound in the seventh, leading three to nothing. For the people at Hammond Lumber Company, taking care of the environment is not only good for the earth, it's good for business. For example, the amount of lumber milled by Hammond has increased dramatically since 1953, yet the amount of land needed to produce that lumber has increased very little, thanks to Hammond's long-standing commitment to careful harvesting. And that means everybody wins, and everybody saves, the company, the customer, and the people of Maine. Almost everybody has gone fishing at one time or another, but very few of you have had the pictures of your big old fish put on TV. Well, now's your chance. If you have a picture of yourself and the one that didn't get away, big or small, trout or marlin, send it to Channel 2, care of Lee's Big Old Fish, to the address on your screen. Then watch it live at 5.30 on Fridays. If we show your picture on TV, we'll send you a Lee's Big Old Fish button. So cast away, and you may land yourself and your big old fish on Channel 2. There are many things we can do in our homes to make our environment cleaner and safer for everyone. If you'd like to know what your family can do, write for Home Safe Home. This informative pamphlet was developed by the Natural Resources Council. Home Safe Home offers many helpful environmental hints and ideas you can use in your home. 
For your free copy, write to home in care of Channel 2, P.O. Box 415, Bangor, Maine, 04402. Friends, once you enter the UPN 38 Boston Sunday Globe seventh inning sweepstakes, all you have to do is choose a Red Sox player whom you think will reach base safely in the seventh inning. You could win a variety of prizes. Check out the Boston Sunday Globe's award-winning sports section every Sunday for contest details in your official entry form, or send your name, address, phone number, and player choice to the address on your screen. The Boston Sunday Globe, for more than two million people, it's the Sunday paper. Orioles bat in the seventh, still looking for their first hit, and they trail three to nothing. Tim Wakefield, the face batters two, three, and four. Brady Anderson, Rafael Palmero, and Bobby Bonilla. Strike one, one and one. Can sense the nervous hush that has fallen over Fenway Park. These fans are well aware of what is going on. Very quiet. As Wakefield delivers strike two, one and two. Well, we've already seen a player or two made behind Wakefield. As a matter of fact, the very first batter in this ball game, Curtis Goodwin, uh, was thrown out on a very fine play by Lewis Alisea. About the time you start looking for that other nice play made. Or two, although Wakefield doesn't allow you to hit an awful lot of balls hard. He's thrown 75 pitches. Three pitches into the seventh inning. Fly ball should be played routinely by Tinsley. And it is. One out in the seventh. Red Sox have three runs on six hits. The Orioles, no runs, no hits. Neither team has made an error. One out in the Baltimore seventh. Palmero's 0 for 2. Strike one. Palmero fly to left in the first, hit into the 3 6 1 double play. Eliminating one of the two base runners the Orioles have had. That's well hit in right. McGee retreating, and there it goes. Into the bleachers. The no hit bid and the shutout end on one swing by Rafael Palmero. The fans applaud the performance of Wakefield, who pitched no hit ball for six and a third innings today. Scoreless ball as well. And that ends as Palmero crosses the plate. It's three to one. Homer number 23 for Palmero in his 68th RBI. And now the focus will return to. Winning the ball game. Well, nothing chintzy about it. That was over the bullpen and into the bleachers on an 0 1 pitch. Bonilla chops one foul. And it's 1 and 1 on Bonilla. Fifth career homer at Fenway for Palmero. On the ground, Nairing, nice play, a long way to his left. Nairing doesn't run very well when he's running around the bases, but he certainly covers a lot of ground at third base. Off the mark quickly when the ball is hit. This ball is hit pretty sharp. Nairing ranging well into that hole. Spinning all the way around, very accurate throw. Bonilla an easy out after the ball was caught. Well, that would have been one of those plays you would have talked about had Palmaro not left the yard. Now Cal Ripken 0 for 2. Two outs in the seventh. 3 1 Boston. Ripken is aligned to deep left and struck out swinging. As we mentioned, the third time. This year that Wakefield is no hit the uh, opposition into the seventh inning. Knuckleball is one of those pitches when it's on it's on and 
You almost have to get lucky to hit it the way it's bouncing around. You have to have a lot of luck to hit that one. It sunk under the bat of Ripken and went right through McFarland. Evening the count at two balls and two strikes. The home run by Palmero estimated at 399 feet. Ripken was tied up and fouled it to the backstop. out of the dirt by McFarland. Full count. Should Ripken reach Harold Baines with bat next. Fly ball to left, not deep. Greenwell puts it away. The Orioles are on the board. The first hit of the ball game for Paul Merrill and the Orioles on Raphael's home run with one out of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch. 3-1 Red Sox. Penobscot High Stakes Bingo, the original Indian Bingo, presents their Super September Sweepstakes Bingo Weekend. On September 9th and 10th, play for over a quarter of a million dollars in cash and prizes. Try your luck on the all-new Crazy L, or play for a mystery cruise vacation. And don't forget about the Bonanza jackpot, worth $25,000. If that isn't enough to get you excited, how about the chance to drive home a brand new 1995 automobile? So don't miss the excitement at the original Indian Bingo, or your odds of winning are greater. Call for reservations today. Dear Glidden Auto Body, this past winter my car slowly slid into the back of a school bus, causing minor but significant damage. I was referred to Glidden and discovered you were an authorized pro shop with my insurance company. My car was at your shop within hours. Your people insisted on using new parts where necessary to repair my car despite my insurance company's effort to save costs. Thank you for protecting my interest and for doing a great job. Mark J. Gibson, Brewer. For collision repair, Glidden's the one. Go ahead, Emily. I'll be right over. Hi, I'm New Center 2 meteorologist Steve McKay, and that's my niece Emily, a second grader here at Asa Adams School in Orono, the same school I attended more than 25 years ago. Boy, time sure does fly. Growing up around here has really helped me to understand and appreciate Maine weather. From old-fashioned nor'easters to beautiful summer days, I've been through them all just like you. And I'll be here forecasting your weather for years to come. All right, Emily, here we go. Weather you can count on only on Channel 2. Come see the world's best young talent at Fenway Park. The Red Sox are hosting the World Junior Baseball Championships August 19th and 20th. Tickets can be purchased in person at Cape Cod Five Cents Savings Bank branches, Plymouth Savings Bank branches, Puritan Clothing Stores, or by calling Ticketmaster at 617-931-2000. For more information, call Tournament Headquarters at 508-790-5893. Three one Red Sox. They come up to bat in the seventh against Rick Crivdall. The scoring in this game on home runs. Jose Canseco a three run homer in the first and Rafael Palmero at the first hit of the ball game for the Orioles. Solo shot in the top of the seventh. Nearing looked at strike one and now he takes a ball. Tim's one for two. He singled right in the fourth. McFarland and Tinsley scheduled to follow. There is action to the Baltimore pen. Ripken throws nearing out. Jesse Orozco and Armando Benitez are throwing in the Baltimore pen. Mike McFarland. Mike McFarland. One for two. Single to left in the second. Fly to center in the fourth. The major news story of the day in baseball, the sad story of the passing of Mickey Mantle, baseball Hall of Famer, died this morning at the age of 63 at Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas. Family members were at his side when he passed away at 2.10 a.m. Eastern Time this morning from liver cancer. 
flag here at Fenway Park is flying at half staff as is the flag at Yankee Stadium today. Yankees were to hold ceremonies before today's game with the Indians honoring Mickey Mantle. There was a moment of silence observed here. And that will be repeated before every major league game today. Mickey Mantle three time American League most valuable player. And McFarland knew he was out on that breaking ball. Four strike three. Two outs in the seventh. That's eight strikeouts for Krivda. Number 26. His highest strikeout total in his five major league starts. Lee Tinsley, 0 for 2. Bounced into a 6 4 3 double play and he struck out swinging. Mickey Mantle, one of the great players of all time. 536 career homers, sixth on the all time list. As we mentioned, three time MVP, 56, 57, and 62. Best season was 56 when he captured the triple crown, led the majors in all three categories. He holds the World Series record for homers and runs batted in. 18 World Series homers, 40 runs batted in. He played in 65 World Series games. Tinsley walks. Second thrown by Crib to the first since the first Number inning. 10. And he threw one to John Ballantyne. Luis Alessio. Well, let's hope that as Mickey Mantle wanted, the lessons will be learned. In the way he lived his life, he encouraged others to not follow his example off the field. And hopefully if there's something good to come out of the sadness of his passing, it will be that people will heed his advice before he left us. Well, that's one of the one, one of the things he really wanted to get it across to everyone who had any admiration for him or followed his career. I'm only sad that my big league career didn't start in time to have had a chance to play against Mickey Manley retired in 1968. But I was privileged on three or four occasions to spend some time with Mickey at different functions. There's a group of about six of eight of us that used to do some uh, golf outing work for Allied Chemical Company back in the mid 70s. Mickey was always a part of that group along with the late Don Drysdale, the late Billy Martin, and I can't tell you what a great individual he was and what a, a very humorous uh, person he was. And I, I could never, ever describe to you how strong that man was, but really, really a great man to be around. At least I was fortunate to have had a chance to spend those kind of times with him. The 1-0 to Alisea is a strike. Louis has struck out twice against Krivda. Red Sox lead three to one in the seventh inning. They about hit the Orioles six to one. Then a pitcher's duel today between Wakefield and Krivda. Two balls and one strike. Willie McGee is on deck. Would you describe Mickey Mantle's home run trot as one of the classics mm. in the game? He might have been the first to hit those tape measure home runs that they talk about so often now. As far as all records are concerned, he came closest to hitting the ball completely out of Yankee Stadium and would have hit it completely out of there had he not pulled the ball quite so much but off the facade and the old Yankee Stadium 2 2 is chopped to short and the force play ends the inning after seven here at Fenway the Red Sox still lead three to one. You've got to live. You can't exist. 
This thing's terrible. They're wasting time. I'm 88, but I've lived 88 years, and I've been lived. No matter what craft you're in, no matter what profession you're in, health is the important thing. Sign up for the Maine Senior Games September 8th and 9th in Bangor. Call the Eastern Agency on Aging at 1-800-432-7812. Coming to weekday afternoons this fall on Channel 2. Thanks. The EMMC Auxiliary presents Follies 95 Salutes the USO. Join us for entertainment and a retrospective look as we recreate the spirit of the USO. Performances will be held at the Bangor Auditorium Friday, September 1st at 8 p.m. and Saturday, September 2nd at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. General admission tickets go on sale August 7th at Ticketmaster, the Bangor Auditorium, Libby's Hallmark Shop, and the EMMC Gift Shop. Capture the nostalgia with Follies 95 Salutes the USO. Today's game is brought to you in part by 9X, making the world of communications a whole lot simpler. And by Lincoln Mercury. See your local dealer today and let them prove it. Tim Wakefield, ready to go to work. He wastes little time. And he missed with ball one to Harold Baines. He's pitching with a two-run lead in the eighth. As the Red Sox go for a sweep of this series. Their 11th win in a row overall. Baines with a ground ball to second. He's now 0 for 3. Down at Yankee Stadium, the Yankees lead the Cleveland Indians 3 to nothing. In the bottom of the fourth, the third Yankee run of the ball game singled in by Randy Velarde. He knocked in Daryl Strawberry. And behind David Cohn, New York leads Cleveland three to nothing. Jeff Manto walked in the sixth. He flied to center in the third. He lines it to third. Nearly knocked Tim Nearing over. Tim did a dance as he snared the line drive for the second out of the eighth inning. I had a play just right again. <laughs> Number 24. Tim Nearing continues to snare liners in hard smashes. And yet he'll add another one to his collection. <laughs> Greg Zahn, first ball swinging. The Orioles have obviously abandoned their strategy of being patient. Marion makes the catch. Four pitches in the inning thrown by Wakefield. On to the bottom of the eighth. Three to one, the Red Sox. Hi, I'm New Center's Bob Elliott. I do the weird, wacky, strange, unusual, and odd stories. It's called Bob's Basement. Catch it only on Channel 2. Credit card scam, mail fraud, consumer ripoff. What's the real deal? Car repairs, child safety. What's the real deal? Now, count on New Center to tell you the real deal. You can trust New Center Susan Kimball and the Real Deal team to work hard to protect you. If it affects you, count on the Real Deal team on News Center at 6, only on Channel 2. Burning trash in your yard in Maine can be dangerous. Not only does trash burning pose a fire hazard, but the smoke can be hazardous to your health as well. Help protect those closest to you by sending your trash to your local recycling center or transfer station. Remember, we all share the same air. Let's roll! Come on, baby, let the two times roll. Come on, baby, let the two times roll. It's a very difficult skill to master. You might want to practice on a spare piece of wood. Right. That's good advice. I'll give you more good advice. Always think safety when working with a spinning lathe. You notice I didn't wear a necktie. We got a lot of letters about this one. Nothing hanging down and no loose clothing. Possibility.
New pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Jesse Orozco is on after seven solid innings from the rookie Rick Krivda. With this appearance today, Orozco now leads the American League in games appeared in with number 48. Two wins, two losses. Second appearance for the left-hander in this series. He was outstanding here on Friday night in relief of Kevin Brown in that ball game. Orozco went an inning and two-thirds, struck out five Red Sox batters for a season high for the left-hander. And boy, he had all of his stuff working that night. He was a tough customer. Matter of fact, he's been a tough customer all year. The league hitting just 193 against Jesse. And the rookie Krivda was impressive. He was overshadowed today by Tim Wakefield and his flirtation with a no-hitter. Krivda, over seven innings, allowed just six hits and three earned runs. He walked two, struck out a career-high eight through 120 pitches, 77 of them strikes. And on a warm day like today, a young man like Krivda, 120 pitches is enough. Willie McGee has two of the six Boston hits, a couple of singles, one to left, one of the infield variety. Top of the order, McGee, Valentin, and Vaughn coming up. Valentin has not yet extended his hitting streak to 15 games. So have at least this one last opportunity, and he hopes it's the last opportunity. The Red Sox will hold off the Orioles in the ninth. Morosco missed. Manny Alexander, Curtis Goodwin, and Brady Anderson are the scheduled three for Baltimore in the ninth. They are batters 9, 1, and 2. Now the 3 0 to McGee. He's taking all the way, and it's a strike. Ball four. McGee walks to open the eighth. And we pause now for station identification along the UPN 38 Red Sox network. You're watching Channel 2 WLBZ TV Bangor. Sean McDonough with Bob Montgomery, our producer director John Wilson at Fenway Park in Boston. Final game of this four game series between the Red Sox and the Orioles. Behind Tim Wakefield and Jose Canseco. The Red Sox lead three to one. Wakefield has held the Orioles to one run on one hit, a homer by Rafael Palmeiro. He's only been on the mound for 27 minutes over eight innings. That's a little bit more than three minutes per inning. He must have a tea time this afternoon. Mm. And he can handle himself pretty well out there, too. <laughs> yes, he can. You bet he can. About a 10 handicap golf, maybe even a little bit better than that these days. He claims he's a 10. I'm a little bit suspicious. I'll take him at a 10 and play the world. Yes, you would. We're pleased to have a visit in the booth this afternoon from our friend Gino Oriema, the head women's basketball coach at the University of Connecticut. They are the reigning national champions. And he's the national coach of the year. Terrific guy, and the whole state of Connecticut loves the Huskies, men and women, and understandably so. <laughs> Roscoe having a tough time throwing strikes. Unlike uh, his outing here on Friday night when he threw nothing but strikes. Well, the Mike Orioles right Flanagan now on his way to the mound. Yeah, the Orioles right now interested in trying to keep this a two-run game. They don't have many shots at well they only got three shots to get back in it but they do have the top part of the order up as you mentioned or for the most part the top part of the order up the chance you'll see a pinch hitter maybe for Alexander who knows but they give themselves one more shot at it being nothing more than a two run difference. Mark Lee is warming up. Benitez is just looking on at the moment. He's loose if needed. Mo Vaughn is on deck. We'd probably see Lee if they were pondering a pitching change. Valentin pops it up. Alexander and Paul Merrow. They drop the ball. And they 
throw to second to force McGee. Play has scored a fielder's choice, and the play is 4 6 Alexander to Ripken. It's a high sky. They were obviously both having a tough time picking it up, and they collided. So it looks like Valentin's 14 game hitting streak will end here this afternoon. He reaches on the fielder's choice. Looked like both of them. I could hear one of them yelling. I don't know which one. But when they collided there, that ball just found an open seam. And fortunate for the Orioles, that ball stayed close enough around so they could pick it up and at least get the force at second. Red Sox lead three to one. Ballantin now the runner at first with one out. In the eighth inning, the batter is Mo Vaughn, who singled to right in the first and scored on the Canseco homer. Since then, he has struck out twice. Big swing and a miss. Benji Gill of Texas plays tonight. And Mo with his two whiffs today has fanned 106 times, and he has overtaken Gill for the league lead in strikeouts. Gill has fanned 105 times. In the air in right center, and Bonilla makes the catch. Got a little bit of a late start because of the big swing, and the fact that it is Mo taking that big swing. Two away in the eighth, three to one Boston. The hit six to one for Boston. Neither team has made an error. The Red Sox have not scored since the first when Jose Canseco. Hit a three-run homer in the screen in the left. His 13th round trip for the year. He now has 47 runs batted in in 61 games. Since then, he's popped out and struck out. That home run over the wall was Jose's sixth into the screen or over it. Only John Valentin and Mo Vaughn have hit more homers over the wall. Jose should get credit for two homers over the wall with that ball he hit here on Friday night across the street. Fouls that off to our right. The attendance here this afternoon, 34,158. Another capacity crowd. Four games of the Orioles drew 135,000 fans and change. And the six games on the homestand at this point have drawn just over 200,000. Valentin runs, and he is safe with ease. Golden base number 12 for John. He's only been thrown out four times. He got a tremendous jump. And Zahn had no chance. So now there's a man in scoring position with two down in the eighth and the count one and two on Canseco. Zahn had no chance and should have just thrown the ball right back to Orozco. The only thing a catcher can do here is wind up throwing that runner to third, trying to throw him out when he's got absolutely no chance. And credit that stolen base to Valentin off Jesse Orozco. Now a chance for a single to bring around an insurance run. The one two. He struck him out. And that ends the inning. We go to the ninth. The Red Sox leading three to one. I'm New Center's Bill Green. Whether it's fishing the Penobscot or sailing the Gulf of Maine, you can find it on the Green Outdoors Tuesday at 6, only on Channel 2. Most of us feel pretty safe when we're at work. But every year, highway and utility workers are injured or killed on the job. That's because drivers aren't careful and don't slow down when they approach work zones. Think about it. How would you like it if someone drove through your workplace at 65 miles an hour? Work zone crews are just doing their job. Protect Maine's workers. Give them a break.
Adventure begins this fall. Flipper. Flipper, coming this fall to Channel 2. Let's go see the checklist. Mission goals, check. Or, check. Snack, check. Life jacket, check. Did you know this year in Maine you have to wear a life jacket if you're 10 years old or younger? And the new ones are really cool.